Okay, so since it doesn't look anywhere steeper, we're going to plug in 0.5. So what is 2, 2 to the fifth power? Thirty-two. What is two to the sixth power? So that was a rate of change that changed there by a difference of thirty-two, right? Okay. Now let's try g of x. So g of x, we're going to put five in for x. So what's eight times five? Forty. So forty. And what is 8 times 6? 48. So g of x only had a rate of change of 8, while f of x had a rate of change of 32. So on our picture, on the graph, it looked like they were never going to be, um, f of x was never going to be greater, right? But later on, it would, off the graph, we saw that it would be, right? So we're going to use that interval then between 5 and 6 as being greater for f of x. So between 5 and 6. Now, let's try to find an interval where g of x is going up faster than f of x. A good place to look at would be starting here where x is 0 because they're at the same spot, right? f of x and g of x are at the same height. So if we check there between 0 and 1. So just looking at that graph. So when x is 0, what is f of x? Okay, so here's what I'm asking you. Here's f of x, right? f of x is this curved line, right? I'm asking you, when it hits this line here, the x equals 0 line, where does it hit? So it comes down here and hits there, and it's 1, right? So f of 0 is 1. Okay. Okay. Now, what about f of 1? So I'm following this line now until it hits the x equals 1 line. Where does it hit? At 2. So f of t 1 is 2. Okay, now let's take a look at, oops, that's g f of, x, f of 1. So now we have to take a look at g of 0. So g of 0. Where does this line hit? Zero. It's at zero again, right? Or one. It hits at one. Doesn't it? It's the same place, right? Okay. Now, when I go out to one, where does it hit? About right there. Wherever that is. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, let's call it 8. So, what is the rate of change there for this? So, rate of change, I could do it by going m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. What's y2? We could label it. Here's x1, y1, x2, y2. So what's y2? 2, two minus what's y1? One. What's x2? Two? What's x1? One? Two. So 2 minus 1 is what? And 1 minus 0 is, so the slope there is just 1, right? And that was for f of x. So now let's do g of x. So g of x now, 
we're going to have this be y1 and this be y2. So what's y2? 8 minus what's y1? What's x2? Minus x1? So 8 minus 1? 1 minus 0? So that's 7, right? So which is the greater rate of change, 1 or 7? Seven? 7. So g of x would be the greater rate of change there. And that's what we wanted to prove. Any more questions?